Okay, so this is chat six. And we're gonna talk about rue today. Predominantly, we're getting an, into our diluter genes, which is really exciting because when we get into dilutes, we're gonna start talking about the different varieties that we can create aside from just the clean bases that we've been learning about. So rue, being a diluter gene, uh, it targets and it dilutes black pigmentation on a quail's plumage. It is a sex-linked recessive gene. So that means that it will hide if a male is only heterozygous for rue, it will hide. That male will be a rue carrier and you will not see it on the bird. If it is homozygous, it has two copies of the rue gene and it will, uh, it will pass on one of those copies to 100% of his offspring. The other thing to note about rue is this is the case where females will be hemizygous for the gene, meaning they only have one spot for that gene to be. So if they have one copy of rue gene, then that spot is filled. All of the babies that, um, that they produce will get that one copy of rue from the mother. Um, and if they do not inherit any copies, then that, that area remains blank. So the mutation is on the BR locus. So it's different from all the other genes that are gene mutations that we've talked about as far as the location of it goes. So when we start talking about dilutes, there are some interesting um, color varieties or names for the varieties that we go by commonly. And sometimes we'll have a variety that just doesn't have a common name um, that we use. So I'm going to kind of go through different varieties that we can create with the Rue gene on the different base patterns um, and let you know what they're commonly referred to or if they're, they don't really have a common term that we use, um, but you can still create them. So the first one that is the basic rue on wild type is Egyptian. So a bird would be considered to be Egyptian if it was a male and homozygous for the rue gene, okay? If the hen is hemizygous for it and she does have one copy of the rue gene, she will look Egyptian and she's also referred to as being Egyptian. If the male only carries one copy, we don't consider it to be an Egyptian. We just consider it to be a pharaoh or a brown that carries the rue gene. Okay. Um, the next, the next variety would be scarlet. Scarlet is one copy of extended brown, so your Rosetta base pattern with the homozygous or hemizygous rue on top. Very, very pretty. Range would be homozygous for extended brown. So that's your Tibetan based bird with either heteros or uh, homozygous or hemizygous for rue. Autumn amber is an Italian with rue. Amber mancharian is mancharian with rue. Red pansy is our rotkoff with rue calico calico there's no there's no name the common name i don't believe somebody correct me if i'm wrong but i think we just call it calico rue or rue calico um sparkly is compatible with the rue gene because again they do not they're not on the same locus and a bunch of other diluter genes are also compatible with rue so you can have double uh, diluter genes on a single bird. Um, commonly in the United States, you'll see the fee and rue being on the same bird. And there's some different varieties that we will refer to with names like the Egyptian fee and scarlet fee, for example. Um, and then also red pansy fee, for example. Now with those varieties, 
the names can get kind of muddy, kind of blurry, because there's no name that's distinguishing um, a bird that's homozygous for rue and heterozygous or homozygous for fee. So for example, if you have an Egyptian fee, let's say that that underlying tone is Egyptian, so it's homozygous for rue, but also it can have one copy of fee, which would look different, and two copies of fee, which would look different. So the Egyptian fee kind of covers both scenarios. It would cover the heterozygous fee form of it and the homozygous fee form of it. One is lighter than the other. So if, a homozyg if the bird is homozygous for fee as well as Egyptian, it will look lighter than the variety of an Egyptian being just heterozygous for fee, called the same thing. So that's, that's what I mean when it can kind of get a little muddy name-wise, but it's just a general term to let you know it's a Egyptian base with fee on top, and it could be one copy or two copies of fee. Um, hopefully at some point we can kind of nail down better terms, better names for all of the different mutation varieties and all the different mixes of things. But, um, for now, for now it's random. <laughs> okay. So blue is also compatible with rue and it can throw a variety of different, um, tones. It can create really orange looking birds. It can create um, more of a gray silver. It depends on what kind of base pattern it is, but you'll get a variety if you cross rue uh, to blue, especially if you're, if you're using different base patterns. Um, you can also have rue and silver. And you can also have lavender and rue. And this is one of those less common varieties that we see because we don't have a whole lot of lavender that we have uh, have circulating in the United States that we're aware of. So it's, for example, it's hard for me to, or it has been hard for me to locate a breeder that just has lavender, homozygous lavender birds. It's just not a common mutation. But a lavender plus a rue um, Jean Bird would be called La Creme or La Cream. And that is a um, name that is what we use for that uh, combination of genes. Very pretty. If you guys haven't seen pictures of Lavender and Rue, you can find them or you can find a couple online, but also in the Colors and Genetics group um, in the albums uh, in the album section. So hello, hello, good morning. Yes, lavender and room, very, very pretty. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the mode of inheritance for Rue. Um, the mode of inheritance, this is going to be the reason why you get sex-linked chicks from crossing um, a sex-linked recessive gene. And of course, Klaus is in here. So Klaus is the Rue master. And uh, if you have questions, he would be the one to ask. But having it be a sex-linked mutation, we get a certain type of result when we cross fathers that are homozygous for Rue with non-Rue moms. Let's start with that example. So this would be what our father looks like if he has two copies of Rue. One copy is here. The other copy is there. It's hiding, okay? Because it's recessive. Sex link recessive. Now, if we have a mom who is a pharaoh, this is what's going to end up happening with the babies. The baby is going to grab 
one rue from dad. Has to do that because he's got two copies of it on the BR Locus. So they are going to inherit one copy of Rue from him. And they're not going to inherit anything other than Pharaoh, Pharaoh from mom. So this is our baby. One copy of Rue is hiding. An interesting thing happens here though, because it's going to look different on the male versus the female offspring. In this case, if this is a male, the male is going to be a carrier, meaning you're not going to see it. However, since the female is hemizygous for it, and if she just gets one copy of the Rue gene, it does not hide, it looks as though she is homozygous for the gene. So she is going to look Egyptian. So this is what she's going to look like. This and this. Visually, she's going to look homozygous for Rue. So in this case, in this cross, you had a dad who was homozygous for Rue and a mom who had no Rue, their offspring are going to create a sex-linked result, meaning all of, the, all of the females are going to look Rue, all of the males, since they're just gonna be one copy carriers, are going to look Pharaoh. So this is a really cool thing because when you have a sex-linked project, you can feather sex the offspring in your incubator practically as soon as they hatch on day one. You'll be able to see the pharaoh chicks versus the Egyptian chicks, and you'll know that all of the ones that look Egyptian, red, are hens, and all of the ones that look pharaoh, in this case, are males. Those males are all going to be Rue carriers, so they all have one Rue gene. Now, Egyptian and Pharaoh are both varieties that are feather sexable anyway, so come the third or fourth week, you'll be able to see which chicks have speckles still on their chest, which don't. But the, the scenario where a sex link breeding project is really, really cool and really uh, good to use and valuable to use is when you're working with the extended brown base pattern. Because extended brown, your Rosettas and your Tibetans are not feather sexable varieties ever, okay? However, you can make them feather sexable varieties day one by having your breeding setup be a sex link breeding setup for your EB or extended brown based birds. So you do not have to wait the six to eight weeks and have to vent sex them. A lot of people don't like vent sexing their birds, especially when they're newbies because it's intimidating. It's, it's, it's not an easy process for a lot of people. But if you have sex link EBs, what you're going to end up having let's say you're, um, you're using your Tibetan-based birds and range, okay? You'll have two very clear, very um, easily distinguishable chicks from day one that you'll know, again, this one is, or the Tibetans are males and the um, females are your range. So you can uh, easily sort them day one if you're going to do chick sales and your, you can easily pick out a specific ratio even for your customers. So if you're selling chicks and you want your family, your farm family that are getting these chicks to have five females and one male or 10 females and two males, you'll be able to pick them out as little fluffy balls and give them that and they don't have to worry about sorting them out later. They don't have to worry about culling extra extra boys. They don't have to worry about aggression issues kind of popping up as, um, as they mature because they're already gonna have their proper ratio set from day one. 
You can also do this if you've got um, those types, if you have Rue and uh, you have Celadon projects, you could even have Sexling Celadons, which would be really cool too. Um, you can do it with uh, Italians as well. So it would be Italians and Autumn Ambers. Uh, it's just a really cool thing that you that gives you a lot of options, lots of, lots of things to play with. So if you guys have questions about how that works, let me know. There's, there's probably way too many scenarios that I could go through with you right now on that. So I'll wait for questions. Um, but Rue will always act that way. Always be a sex linked gene. So let me give you an example of something funny that popped up in my flock. Maybe this happens to you guys too, or it has happened or will happen and give you the reasoning why you may end up having birds that are surprisingly Rue, right? So I had a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, hold on. I had a breeding group of fab fees. So fab fees are your wild type birds and they're either heterozygous or homozygous for the fee gene. So they look like a grayscale uh, pharaoh. So I had a breeding group of fab fees and what happened when I hatched birds from that uh, fab fee cross was I ended up with a few, not all, but a few um, Egyptian fee hens, only hens. The reason for that was my fab fee male was a rue carrier. So a few of his female hemizygous offspring grabbed that one copy of Rue that he had that I didn't see. So it ended up giving me a couple babies that were sex linked babies. And I only hatched out a few within those batches because he was not homozygous for Rue. If he was homozygous, all of his girls uh, would have been um, Egyptian fees if the moms were non Rue. But in my case, I, I would sporadically get those Egyptian fee uh, hens. And that is why, because my male was a carrier, okay? So if you guys have uh, pansies that look rock cough and you get uh, a couple of red pansies from that cross, that's another example. You would have, you would be using a pansy or rock cough male who was a carrier or heterozygous for root. If you guys have questions, let me know. I think that's about it for Rue. You can have Rue with Sparkly. They're compatible, they're beautiful. Um, Klaus has some amazing photos of them, Rue Sparklies. And I just wanna, con I wanna conclude this video with um, talking a little bit more about Sexlink Brown. So sex link brown is the same type of gene that Rue is. It's also, I believe, on the BR locus, okay? And it's also sex linked recessive. So it works the same way as Rue. Um, but the difference is the phenotype for um, sex link brown versus the phenotype for, for Rue, like Egyptian Rue, Scarlet range, is um, the sex link brown is much more subtle than Rue birds. You'll see that brown face mask on homozygous sex link brown birds if they're males. You'll see it throughout the hens, and I talked about that, I believe, in our video one. Um, but this is where you'll find two genes that um, act similarly and um, are both sex link recessives. Okay. Klaus says his advice would be not to cross blue, rue, and feed together without control over them because rue, oh, sorry, trying to read the rest. I can't read the rest right now, but I'll have to go back to it. But yes, I would absolutely agree. 
Um, unless you're trying to do like a sex link project that is fee. So if you're trying to do Rue fee pansies and you want them sex linked, I guess that's, that's, that's an example where you would have control over them, like um, Klaus just said. But yeah, if you can avoid putting your diluter jeans together, you're gonna have um, much more predictable results because you're going to know where those mutations are within your flock. So yes, I would absolutely agree with that. Okay, I don't see any other questions now. But I will come back later and I will check. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. And next time in our video seven, we'll go over fee. Okay, bye guys.